Hi everyone, The X is back with another movie reaction and today we are checking out one of the most iconic movies on this channel and it is going to be 1994's Forrest Gump. Now, I have a little bit of history with this movie and that is pretty much when I was younger and I was in high school, my mom bought the soundtrack and as you can tell it had all the classic songs on it so when we would go on road trips while I was stationed in Oklahoma we would play the two disc special edition soundtrack so I've been exposed to the soundtrack I've been to the Bubba Gump restaurant I the only thing else I know is that Tom Hanks is the main character I guess is in the star and it's directed by Robert Zemeckis the same guy who did Roger Rabbit and Back to the Future and a bunch of others yet I have never seen this movie. What makes this so iconic? Well, we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna go ahead and get right into it. But before we get started, if you are new to the channel and you wanna see all my future reaction videos, click on that subscribe button down below and help grow the channel. Also, if you wanna check me out behind the scenes, check out my Instagram. All right, so let's get on with the show as X Spotlight's Forrest Gump. Robert Zemeckis, the director of Back to the Future, the creator of Back to the Future, director of Roger Rabbit. Robin Wright, she's the one that was married to Sean Penn many years ago, right? Gary Sinise! We saw Apollo 13, one of the first movies we did, check it out. Sally Field! I guess after Mrs. Doubtfire came out, or finished up, she went out to go do uh, Forrest Gump. Ken Ralston, I love him, great visual effects uh, supervisor. Music by Alan Silvestri. He's actually a collaborator with Robert Zemeckis. <laughs> what stuff's in there? Oh my god, Curious George! I used to love the Curious George books. Do you want a chocolate? My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. I bet you could walk all day in shoes like that and not feel a thing. My feet hurt. Well, I'm always said it. There's an awful lot you could tell about a person by their shoes. How so? I bet if I think about it real hard, I could remember my first pair of shoes. Mama said they'd take me anywhere. She said they was my magic shoes. You can open your eyes now. Oh, he must have had something when he was younger. His legs are strong, Miss Gump. As strong as I've ever seen. But his back crooked as a politician. Oh, it's Sally Field, that's his mother. Now, when I was a baby, Mama named me after the great Civil War hero, General Nathan Bedford Ford. He did was, he started up this club called the Ku Club. Oh my God. They'd all dress up in their robes and, and act like a bunch of ghosts or spooks or something. They'd even put bed sheets on their horses and ride around. Don't ever let anybody tell you they're better than you, Forrest. If God intended everybody to be the same, he'd have given us all braces on a leg. Mom always had a way of explaining things so I could understand. We lived about a quarter mile off Route 17, about a half mile from the town of Greenbow, Alabama. Since it was just me and Mama, and we had all these empty rooms. You're the same as everybody else. You are no different. Now, his IQ is 75. Well, we're all different. Forrest is... Right here. The state requires a minimum IQ of 80 to attend public school, Mrs. Gump. He's going to have to go to special school. That's terrible. They even want to put me in special education, too. We're talking about five little points here. We're a progressive school system. There's no progressive with that. Is that Mr. Gump? Mrs. Gump? He's on vacation. Not. What the? <laughs> you don't say much, do you? <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't. Yeah, goodness. Who makes that sound anyway? Vacation, mean. Where Daddy went. Curious George. Vacations when you go somewhere and you don't ever come back. Wrong, she didn't want him to know the truth about what happened to his father. One time, a young man was staying with us, and he had him a guitar case. Guitar case? Oh my God, Elvis Presley! 
Say, man, show me that crazy little walk you just did there. You ain't no more I like that guitar. It sounded good. I started <laughs> moving around. That's how Elvis gets the dance. My hips. This one night, guess what? You ain't no more 1957, that was on the Ed Sullivan. Was that the Ed Sullivan show? I forgot how shocking Elvis was with his dance moves. Later, that handsome young man who they called the cane had himself a heart attack or something. 77. You know, it's funny how you remember some things, but some things you can't. I remember the bus ride on the first day of school very well. Siobhan Fallon. You come along. Mama said not to be taking rides from strangers. It's a buck cool. That's okay. I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. I'm Dorothy Harris. Well, now we ain't strangers anymore. <laughs> Slate's taken. Oh, yeah. Kids can be cruel. I can't sit here. Because I don't remember being born. I don't recall what I got for my first Christmas. I don't know when I went on my first outdoor picnic, but... I do remember the first time I heard the sweetest voice in the wide world. You can sit here if you want. I had never seen anything so beautiful in my life. She was like an angel. What's wrong with her legs? My legs are just fine and dandy. I just sat next to her on that bus and had a conversation all the way to school. I bet these are going to make me a Next to Mama, no one ever talked to me or asked me questions. Are you stupid or something? Mama says stupid as a stupid. <laughs> From that day on, we was always together. Jenny and me was like peas and carrots. The first real friend he made, all those other kids were mean to him. She helped me learn how to read, and I showed her how to swing. <laughs> Just stay a little longer. For some reason, Jenny didn't ever want to go home. She was my most special friend. Now, my mom always told me that miracles happen every day. Some people don't think so, but they do. He always lives by Mama always said. Are you proud of just playing stupid? No. What the hell's wrong with kids? They're so mean. Run, Forrest! Run away! Hurry! Wait, that line! The Bubba Gump restaurant, when you put up the license plate, they said, Run, Forrest Gump! Run! It's from this scene! Oh, his braces came off. Run, Just like that, it came off. Now, you wouldn't believe it if I told you that I could run like the wind blows. <laughs> Kind of nodding. She's like, okay, I'll listen a little bit. I was running. He's fast. <laughs> oh my God. Just like that. Her mama had gone up to heaven when she was five and her daddy was some kind of a farmer. He was a very loving man. He was always kissing and touching her and her sisters. And then this one time, Ginny wasn't on the bus to go to school. Uh-oh. Ginny, why did you come to school today? Shh, Dad is taking a nap. Ginny! She's being abused. Play with me, boy. I can say fa, fa, fa. Her father had an alcohol bottle, too. He didn't turn Jenny into a bird that day. He had the police say Jenny didn't have to stay in that house no more. She went to live with her grandma. Jenny'd sneak out and come on over to my house just because she said she was scared. I think it was her grandma's dog. He was a mean dog. Hey, stupid! Quit it! Even as a teenager, he was still getting picked on. Run, Morris! Run! <laughs> This is why we had Rebel Rouser by Dwayne Eddy because he was running away from those guys. Oh, they're in a car too! Oh, they got a confederate and all. Oh, wait, he jumped over that! I ran to get where I was going. I never thought it would take me anywhere. He's really athletic. I wonder if he does any sports later on in the movie. Speaking of which... <laughs> it 
Who in the hell is that? That's the local idiot. I got to go to college, too. <laughs> nice, he did. He got to go do sports. He got to do football. <laughs> Federal troops enforcing a court order integrated the University of Alabama. Two Negroes were admitted, but only after Governor George Wallace had carried out a symbolic threat to stand in the schoolhouse door. Oh yeah, George Wallace, the asshole who said segregation today, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. Uh, we are awakening the American people, spoken about so many times, which is so evident today. Mar in Tuscaloosa had been desegregated, and students Jimmy Hood and Vivian Malone... Assists. Oh, he's going to help? Oh, he gave it to them. Ma'am, you dropped your book, ma'am. Governor Wallace did what he promised by being on the Tuscaloosa campus. Wouldn't that go? Who as hell was? Thought it'd be a good idea. Is it the number nine? No, it's the number four. It was nice talking to you. Did you go to a girls' college or to a girls' and boys' together college? It was co-ed. Because Jenny went to a college I couldn't go. It was a college just for girls. I was about was taking advantage of her. Yeah, who is that? Get a sewing better. Why'd you do that? Brought you some chocolate. Sorry. Well, you'll always be you. Just I want to be famous. I want to be a singer like Joan Baez. She's on the soundtrack, of course. She stays with my guitar, my voice. She had aspirations. Have you ever been with a girl, Forrest? I sit next to them in my home economics class. I'll. I mean, alone. I forgot he was a little bit sheltered. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Oh, I'm dizzy. But that never happened in home ec. No. <laughs> what Thank the? Oh, her roommate. <laughs> Mike, stop. <laughs> Oh, they want to remind him he's getting a touchdown. American football. Kennedy! They put you in this Dr. Pepper. About anything you want to eat or drink. The sense number one, I wasn't hungry but thirsty. And number two, they was free. I must have drank me about 15 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor, sir. Congratulations. How does it feel being I can't tell you how many times I've actually drank too many much coffee. I actually had to go to the bathroom. Or liquid for that matter. How do you feel? I got it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they superimpose all the historical figures on him. That's great, spe or next to him, that's great special effects. Sometime later, but Marilyn Monroe. Somebody shot that nice young president when he was riding in his car. Oh my god, I've seen footage of that. Somebody shot his little brother too, only he was in a hotel kitchen. After only five years of playing football, I got a college degree. Mama was so proud. Excellent. Uh oh. Hear me now. Say it's tight. Tight. Even as adults, they were still mean to him. Sit down if you want to. You ever been on a real shrimp boat? I'm talking about a shrimp catching boat. I've been working on shrimp boats all my life. I started out on my uncle's boat. That's my mama's brother. I was just looking into buying a boat of my own and got drafted. My given name is Benjamin Buford Blue. People call me Bubba. It's like one of them old redneck boys. Can you believe that? His mama cooked shrimp. And her mama before her cooked shrimp. And her mama before her mama cooked shrimp, too. Bubba's family knew everything they was to know about the shrimping business. thing there is to know about the shrimping business. Matter of fact, I'm going into the shrimping business for myself. To do whatever you tell me, drill sergeant. God damn it, Gump! That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. I fit in the army like one of them round peg and always answer every question with, yes, drill sergeant. Yes, yes drill sergeant! On a good day, you can catch over 100 pounds of shrimp. That's what you spend on gas. Done, drill sergeant! Why did you put that weapon together so quickly, Gump? You tell me to, drill sergeant. This is a new company record. If it wouldn't be a waste of such a damn fine enlisted men, I'd recommend you for OCS, Private Gump. You are going to be a general someday, Gump. Shrimp is the fruit of the sea. Boil it, broil it, bake it, saute it. Shrimp Creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried, deep fried, stir fried. He's listing every type of shrimp. Coconut shrimp. Tempura shrimp. 
shrimp and potatoes, shrimp burger, shrimp sandwich. That's that's about it. I'd miss Jenny. Hey, come. The tits on her. Playboy magazine. Is that? Jenny had gotten into some trouble over some photos of her in her college sweater. Because a man who owns a theater in Memphis, Tennessee, saw those photos and offered Jenny a job. I took the bus up to Memphis to see her perform in that show. From Hollywood, California, our very own beatnik beauty. Let's give a big round of applause to the luscious Bobby Dylan. Bobby Dylan. How many must, must a man go? That's how, that's wind blows. She was a folk singer. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, here it comes, oh, what the? Stupid jerk, I'm singing a song here. Here comes Forrest. Oh, wow. What are you doing? He's trying to protect you. You can't keep trying to rescue me all the time. They was trying to grab you. A lot of people try to grab me. You don't know what love is. We pray for God to turn me into a bird so I could fly far, far away. You think I could fly off this bridge? What do you mean, Jenny? She was thinking about suicide. They sent me to Vietnam. This is whole other country. Just, if you're ever in trouble, don't try to be brave. You just run, okay? Just run away. Jenny, I write you all the time. It's like she's trying to escape all the trauma that happened to her when she was younger in that f house. You come back safe to me. Do you hear? <laughs> That's why we got CCR, because he was getting sent to Vietnam. <laughs> it ain't me. <laughs> I can't help myself. I love you and nobody. Barbecues and beer and everything. Hey, Gary Sinise! Do not salute goddamn snipers all around this area who love to grease an officer. I'm Lieutenant Dan Tate. What's wrong with your lip? I was born with big gums, sir. Yeah, well, you better tuck that in. Where are you boys from in the world? Alabama, sir. You twins? No, we are not relations, sir. Stick with me. Learn from the guys that have been in country a while, you'll be all right. There is one item of GI gear that can be the difference between a live grunt and a dead grunt. When we're out humping, I want you boys to remember to change your socks whenever we stop. I felt real lucky he was my lieutenant. He was from a long, great military tradition. Somebody in his family had fought and died in every single American war. Hoping to continue that tradition. Die for loyal of your country. Two standing orders in this platoon. One, take good care of your feet. Two, try not to do anything stupid getting yourself killed. Very direct also in his orders. I sure hope I don't let him back. Jimi Hendrix. And we were always looking for this guy named Charlie. Charlie means code. Lieutenant Dan was always getting these funny feelings about a rock or a trail or the road. So he'd tell us to get down. Shut up. Oh, he doesn't want snipers. You gotta be careful. There was Dallas from Phoenix. Cleveland, he was from Detroit. Tex. Hey, Tex. Man, what the hell's going on? And Tex would... Well, I don't remember where Tex come from. Well, platoon, on your feet. Step it up. Is that the doors? Because there was always some place to go. Higher enough. And there was always something to do. Hmm. <laughs> We've been through every kind of rain they hit. Little bit of stinging rain and big old fat rain. Rain that flew in sideways. And sometimes rain even seemed to come straight up from under. I had some some uncles who served in Vietnam. You know why we a good partnership for us? Because we be watching out for one another. How would you like to go into the shrimping business with me? I got it all figured out too. So many pay on a shrimp, pay off the boat. We can just live right on the boat. I'll be the captain. We can just work it together. Split everything right down the middle. 50 50. And hey, folks, all the shrimp you can eat. That's a fine idea. He had a Tabasco sauce on his head, too. I sent her letters. Not every day. I told her what I was doing and asked her what she was doing and told her how I thought about her always and how I was looking forward to getting a letter from her just as soon as she had time. She became a hippie or got into the culture. Then I'd sign each letter 
love Forrest Gump. Even when he was at war, he always thought about he always thought about his friends and families and close ones. <laughs> No! Bubba, no. I ran so far and so fast that pretty soon I was all by myself, which was a bad thing. Oh no. Bubba was my best good friend. I had to make sure he was okay. No, don't tell me he was shot. And on my way back to find Bubba, well, that was this boy laying on the ground. Heck. Okay. I couldn't just let him lay there all alone and scared the way he was. And every time I went back looking for Bubba, somebody else was saying, Help me, Forrest, help me. Where's Bubba? I started to get scared that I might never find Bubba. We got Charlie all over this area. I got it. Lieutenant Dan. You leave me here. Get away. Just leave me here. Get out. God, I said leave me here. God. Oh, he's breaking the tradition. You think you're going? Get Don't you stay here, God damn it! That's an order. I gotta find Bob. Forrest just can't leave anyone behind. Okay, Forrest. I'd have known this was going to be the last time me and Bubba was going to talk. I'd have thought of something better to say. Hey, Forrest. Last time he died. Why did this happen? He got shot. Bubba said something I won't ever forget. I want to go home. Bubba was my best good friend. Bubba was going to be a shrimp and boat captain, but instead he died right there by that river in Vietnam. That's so sad to lose your friend like that. It was a bullet, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Bit me directly in the buttocks. The only good thing about being wounded in the buttocks is the ice cream. <laughs> they gave me all the ice cream I could eat. And guess what? A good friend of mine was in the bed right next door. Tanner Dan ain't gonna be your friend, especially after what you did. <laughs> yeah, he's not happy with you, Forrest. Oh my god, he lost his legs. Jenny's in San Francisco. Good catch, go. You know how to play this? Come on, let me show you. Now, the secret to this game is no matter what happens, never, ever take your eye off the ball. The doors. Face go out of the rain. I didn't have anyone to play ping pong with. <laughs> It made me look like a duck in water. Even Lieutenant Dan would come and watch me play. No, he's still mad at you. Hey! I should have died out there with my men, but now I'm nothing but a goddamn cripple, a legless freak. Do you know what it's like not to be able to use your legs? Tradition. I had a destiny. I was supposed to die in the field with honor. That was my destiny. And you cheated me out of it. I was Lieutenant Dan Taylor. You still Lieutenant Dan. Just because you're not dead and following the tradition doesn't mean you aren't. You've been awarded the Medal of Honor. Guess what, Lieutenant Dan? They want to give me a... Me what the hell? What'd they do with Lieutenant Dan? They send him home. President Johnson awarded four medals of honor to men from each of the armed services. America. Lyndon B. Johnson. I understand you were wounded. Where were you in the butt talk, son? Oh, that must be a sight. I'd like to see that. What? <laughs> His mom. Maybe you should put a censored sign next to that. Because the streets were awful crowded with people. Looking at all the statues and monuments and some of them people were loud and pushy. Okay. Washington, D.C., we were here three years ago. There was this man 
giving a little talk, and for some reason he was wearing an American flag for a shirt. And he liked to say the F word. <laughs> and every time he said the F word, people, for some reason, well, they cheer. His mother's never spoke a foul tongue in their house. Boy, Vietnam! Lincoln Monument, that's right. That's over, That we went there. Me and my mom went there. In Vietnam. Uh-oh. Putting an end to these protests. Jesus Christ, what are they doing this? Some things never change. This, this one, give me that. Vietnam. When all you guys protested Vietnam, was it like this? That's all I have to say about that. Please don't know what he said. My name is Forrest, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Oh! Jenny? It's that moment, isn't it? It's that line. My mom told me that line when we were in Washington. It was the happiest moment of my life. It's like all he ever wanted was just to be with Jenny. Don't you know we in a war here? Cool. He's cool. He's one of us. Let me tell you about us. What the hell Our purpose here is to protect our black leaders from the racial onslaught of the pig who wish to brutalize our black, rape our women, and destroy our black community. The Black Panthers. This is West. Jimi Hendrix in the background. The president of the Berkeley chapter of SDS. We are here to offer protection and help for all those who need our help. Because we, the Black Panthers, are called it. We are against any war where black soldiers are sent to the front line to die for a country that hates and kills in their own communities as they sleep in their beds at night. <gasps> oh shit! That is a big no-no. <laughs> Unbelievable. She said that guys always grabbed him at her grabbed him at her show. He should not be hitting you, Jenny. I agree. Sorry I had a fight in the middle of your Black Panther party. I would never hurt you, Jenny. I know you wouldn't, Forrest. I wanted to be your boyfriend. We walked around all night, Jenny and me. She told me about all the traveling she'd done, how she discovered ways to Expand her mind. The drug counterculture of the 1960s. She made it all the way to California. Anybody want to go to San Francisco? San Francisco. Far up. Oh my God, Scott McKenzie. That's why we had him on the soundtrack. I didn't want it to end. It would never hurt you. Yeah, right. You know what I think? I think you should go home to Greenbow, Alabama. <laughs> We have very different lives, you know. I want you to have this. I got it, doing what you told me to do. Why are you so good to me? You're my girl. I'll always be your girl. Every man she came across treats her so horribly. Apollo 11. One, I think I'm Apollo 13 now. That was in a, that was in Apollo 13. The best way for me to fight the communists was to play ping pong. I was so good that some years later, the army decided that I should be on the All American. <laughs> and world peace was in our hands. But all I did was play ping pong. I was a national celebrity. Uh, here he is, Forrest. He fell into he, it's like he fell into it. <gasps> John Lennon, no way. In the land of China, people hardly got nothing at all. No possessions. <laughs> and in China, they never go to church. No religion, too. <laughs> Hard to imagine. Well, it's easy if you try, Dick. Some years later, that nice young man from England was on his way home to see his little boy. For no particular reason at all, somebody shot. Yep, ninth, December 8th, 1980. They gave you the Congressional Medal. Yes, sir, they surely did. They gave you an imbecile, a moron who goes on television and makes a fool out of himself in front of the whole damn country the Congressional Medal of Honor. That, that's just perfect. I've got one thing to say to that. God damn bless America. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, hey. Forrest, don't just stand there. Help him. Oh. I've 
heard that line, I'm walking here. Have you found Jesus yet? No. I didn't know I was supposed to be looking for him, so. <laughs> That's all these cripples down at the VA. That's all they ever talk about. Jesus this, and Jesus that. Now, if I accept Jesus into my heart, I'll get to walk beside him in the kingdom of heaven. Beside him in the kingdom of heaven. Kiss my crippled ass. I'm going to heaven, Lieutenant Dane. We'd go in partners. He'd be the cat most shrimp boat, and I'd be his first mate. Now that he's dead, that means I gotta be the captain. Private Gump here is gonna be your shrimp boat captain. The day that you are a shrimp boat, I will come and be your first mate. If you're ever a shrimp boat captain, that's the day I'm an astronaut. One year later, Apollo 13. On the channel, check it out. Where you been, baby cakes, huh? Haven't seen you around lately. You know, you should have been here for Christmas because Tommy brought around on the house and gave everybody a turkey sandwich. Don't you just love New Year? You can start all over. Everybody gets a second chance. But in the middle of all that fun, I began to think about Jenny. Second chances. Come on, Max. Don't you love her as she's walking out the door? She wasn't really having a happy New Year. Hey, he's not stupid. What did you say? Don't call him stupid. You were calling him names just a minute ago. Holy crap! He really stood up for Forrest Gump. He didn't want to be called crippled, just like I didn't want to be called stupid. That's why he threw him out. Happy New Year, Gump. Because he knew labels were not okay. They invited me and the ping pong team to visit the White House again. Nixon. So are you enjoying yourself in our nation's capital, Gump? I am not a crook. I know of a much nicer hotel. It's brand new, very modern. I'll have my people take her. <gasps> Watergate. You might want to send a maintenance man over to that office across the way. Fuse box or something, because them flashlights, they're keeping me awake. Oh, we went on a tour in Washington, D.C. That's where the break-in, that's where the DNC break-in took place in 1972 or 73. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president. Yeah, and Ford parted him, too. I have your discharge papers. Service is up, son. Does this mean I can't play ping pong no more? Body army it does. You can still play ping pong. We've had all sorts of visitors for us. Everybody wants you to use their ping pong. <laughs> You'd be agreeable to saying you like using their paddle? Oh, but Mama, I only like using my own paddle. Hi, Miss Louise. Hey, Father. See if it grows on. That oh, mama, good, she sure boy. was right. It's funny good. how things work out. I didn't stay home for long because I'd made a promise to Bubba, and I always try to keep my... Oh, he's gonna make the shrimp boat. ...and to buy a battery to meet Bubba's family and make the introduction. Are you crazy or just plain stupid? Stupid is stupid, duh. <laughs> and, of course, I paid my respect. Oh. I'm taking the $24,562.47. <laughs> Well, that, that's laugh after well, a new haircut and a new suit and it took mom out to real fans. <laughs> Are you stupid or something? Stupid is, stupid does. <laughs> Putting all that on gas, ropes, and new nets, and a brand new shrimping boat. Aw, uh, he's such a good friend to him and he's such a good business. He really, really came through. Look at that, he really did it. They said he was stupid or crazy. This is why labels suck. You always end up proving them wrong. Now, Bubba told me everything he knew about shrimp, but you know what I found out? Shrimping is tough. I only caught five. A couple of boys, you could have yourself a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ever think about naming this old boat? It's bad luck to have a boat without a name. I'd never named a boat before, but there was only one I could think of. The most beautiful name. Uh, of course, the Jenny. Do a little dance. <laughs> Make a little love. Now this wasn't on the soundtrack. Uh-oh. Oh, she is not happy. <gasps> oh my god, she's gonna try and commit suicide. You gotta be kidding me. Because of all the trouble she's having, she's having a difficult... <gasps> I'm 
If only Forrest knew. I thought about Jenny all the time. He's thought about her ever since he was a kid. Lieutenant Dan came back. Hey, come on, you left your boat there, dude. Thought I'd try out my sea legs. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. Yes, I know that. He was being sarcastic. You wrote me a letter, you idiot. Well, well, Captain Forrest Gump. I had to see this for myself. <laughs> you were ever a shrimp boat captain, then I'd be your first mate. Well, here I am. I am a man of my word. Okay. No Forrest? <laughs> You should have stopped it. That's where we're gonna find those shrimp, my boy! <laughs> Toilet. <laughs> Still no shrimp, Lieutenant Dang. Well, maybe you should just pray for shrimp. Still praying at, I so I went to church every Sunday. Sometimes Lieutenant Dang came too, though I think he left the praying up to me. Well, all praying gets you. Keep praying. Here. It's funny Lieutenant Dan said that, because right then, God showed up. Now me, I was scared, but Lieutenant Dan, he was mad. Oh shit! He is mad, he's on top of that. Hurricane Carmen came through here yesterday, destroying nearly everything. How on earth? Only one shrimping boat actually survived the storm. Louise! Louise, that's Forrest. People still needed them shrimps for shrimp cocktails and barbecues and all. Bubba Gump shrimp's what they got. Bubba Gump shrimp, the restaurant! Let's say Bubba Gump bone. Bubba Gump shrimp. He had the hat in his suitcase. Are you telling me you're the owner of the Bubba Gump Shrimp Corporation? Yes, sir. We got more money than David Croft. I heard some whoppers in my time, but that tops them all. <laughs> We were sitting next to a millionaire. I thought it was a very lovely story. Would you like to see what Lieutenant Dan looks like? Well, yes, I would. That's him right there. Bubba Gump. She's like, oh, wow. Well, let me tell you. I never thanked you for saving my life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I thank... He made his peace with God. Of course, that's a symbolism. Forrest has a phone call. Yeah, well, you have to tell him to call him back. He is indisposed. His mama said. Uh oh. He really loves his mother so much. We sure got you straightened out, didn't we, boy? I'm dying, Forrest. Why are you dying, Mom? It's my time. Death is just a part of life. Something we're all destined to do. But I was destined to be your mama. I did the best I could. You did good, Mom. Well, I happen to believe you make your own destiny. You have to do the best with what God gave you. What's my destiny, Mom? You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. Life is a box of chocolates, Forrest. You never know what you're gonna get. And that goes back to the beginning. She had got the cancer. That's what she was. I bought her a new hat with little flowers on it. And that's all I had to say about that. Now, because I'd been a football star and a war hero and a national celebrity and a shrimp and boat captain and a college graduate, this city falls of Greenbow, Alabama, decided to get together and offered me a fine job. So uh, I never went back to work for Lieutenant Dan. Every success, all that success, and he gets stuck with that? And so then I got a call from him saying we don't have to worry about- Oh, Steve Jobs! Now, Mama said there's only so much fortune a man really needs. So, I gave a whole bunch of it to the Four Square Gospel Church. Oh, he's so charitable and he's such a good person. I gave a whole bunch to the Bio the Battery Fishing Hospital. And even though Bubba was dead, and Lieutenant Dane said I was nuts, I gave Bubba's mama Bubba Shell. Oh, that's right, 50-50. <laughs> they made that he kept the deal, the bargain. She didn't have to work in nobody's kitchen no more. <laughs> And because I was a gozillion and I cut that grass for free. Even with all the success, the only thing he ever wanted was Jenny. She was there. Hello, Forrest. Hello, Jenny. <laughs> 
Jenny came back and stayed with me. Maybe it was because she had nowhere else to go. Or maybe it was because she was so tired because she went to bed and slept and slept like she hadn't slept in years. And she'd listen about ping-ponging and shrimping and mama making a trip up to heaven. Oh, I did all the talking. She missed him. Which was how she grew up in. All the pain and years of frustration and anger she took out in that one moment. You know, back in those days, there was no mental health, you know, no mental health services. They couldn't help you or there wasn't a lot. They couldn't help with trauma. I never really knew why she came back. It was like olden times. We was like peas and carrots again. That's why we had Sweet Home Alabama, because she came back. Pick pretty flowers and put them in a room for her. And she gave me the best gift anyone could ever get in the wide world. Just the money. Hey, it's the shoes from the beginning. And she even showed me how to dance. We was like family, Jenny and me. And it was the happiest time of my life. You done watching it? Is this the bicentennial? Will you marry me? I'd make a good husband. You would, Forrest. You don't want to marry me. Why don't you love me, Jenny? But I know what love is. She always bound herself back to Forrest Gump. She's just denying it to herself and she knows it. Jenny. Forrest, I do love you. He always loved her, no matter what. Where are you running off to? I'm not running. Just going back to her miserable life, and then he just she just leaves him there. And he's all alone too. That day, I decided to go for a little run. So I ran to the end of the road. I thought maybe I'd run to the end of town. President Carter suffering from heat exhaustion. Maybe I'd just run across the great state of Alabama. And that's what I did. I ran clear to the ocean. Santa Monica? It's since I've gone this far. I might as well turn. When I got to another ocean, I figured since I've gone this far, I might as well just turn back. Keep right on going. When I got tired, I slept. When I got hungry, I oh, ate. Okay. When I had to go. <laughs> the cornfields. It looks like Oklahoma a little bit. Oh my God, it's fall. Look at that. About Mama, Bubba, Lieutenant Dane. But most of all, I thought about Jenny. For the fourth. She's a waitress? It's about to cross the Mississippi River again today. For world peace? Are you doing this for the homeless? Are you running for women's rights? They what just couldn't believe that somebody would do all that running for no particular reason. Why are you doing this? You felt like running. I said, here's a guy that's got his act together. Here's somebody who's got it all figured out. I'll follow you anywhere, Mr. Gump. So, I fanboy. That is crazy. He would just travel like this. Whoa, man, you just ran through a big pile of dog shit. It happened. <laughs> what, shit? Sometimes. There's your slogan. Oh. And some years later, I heard that that fella did come up with a bumper sticker slogan, and he made a lot of money off of it. <laughs> and you didn't even ask for royalties? A camera. Here, use this one. Nobody likes that color anyway. Uh, have a nice day. The smiley shirt. Oh the my god. Later. He influenced a lot of people. Okay, so Forrest influenced a lot of other culture in that time. I'm always said you got to put the past behind you before you can move on. And I think that's what my running was all about. True, you gotta put the past behind. I had run for three years, two months. 14 days and 16 hours. By the way, that's Monument Valley. That's where they shot Back to the Future Part 3. I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. And just like that, my running days was over. 5 p.m. as President Reagan was... Oh, that was the assassination. No, on Ronald Reagan. 
It seems as though Forrest Gump, it's like he changes people wherever he goes. It seems that's kind of the purpose of this movie throughout history. Henry Street is just five or six blocks. I got your letter. Oh, I was wondering about that. Thank you. I ate some. Chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate. I kept a scrapbook of your, of your clippings and everything. There you are. This, I got you running. Go, go, dancer. I want to apologize for anything that I ever did to you because I was messed up for a long time and... Yoo-hoo! Hey! Hi! She's realizing the error of her ways, but too late. This is my old friend from Alabama. <sighs> is that Mary Ellen or trainer? No problem. Oh, Gotta go, Jen. I'm double parked. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Haley Joel Osmond. This is my very good friend, Mr. Gump. Can you say hi to him? Hello, Mr. Gump. You're a mama, Jenny. I'm a mama. His name's Forrest. Like me. He got a daddy named Forrest, too. You're his daddy, Forrest. Oh, when they were together in 76. He's a very smart kid, too. He was worried it would be hereditary. There's nothing you need to do, okay? You didn't do anything wrong. Isn't he beautiful? He's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Is, is he smart? He's very smart. He's one of the smartest in his class. Yeah, it's okay. Go talk to him. He has a son. He's just watching Sesame Street. What do you watch, Jane? Bert and Ernie. I love Bert and Ernie as a kid, too. Forrest, I'm sick. What, do you have a cough due to cold? I have some kind of virus, and the, the doctors don't. I don't know what it is, and there isn't anything they can do about it. AIDS? Jenny, you and little Forrest could come stay at my house in Greenbow. I'll take care of you if you're sick. Would you marry me, Forrest? She rejected him three, all those years ago, and now she wants him to marry him? Okay. Forrest, it's time to start. You're tired. Lieutenant Dan, he has legs and he's got a wife. I got a new leg. Custom made. He shaved and he cleaned himself Titanium up. Titanium huh? alloy. Magic legs. He had his faith in God restored. Here's my fiance, Susan. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, this is my Jenny. It's nice to meet you finally. <laughs> that turning point at the boat, my God, that was what changed everything. And when he decided that poor shouldn't be labeled stupid... He had realized what he had done, what he'd done for people. For him. Were you scared in Vietnam? Yes. Sometimes it would stop raining long enough for the stars to come out. And then it was nice. It was like just before the sun goes to bed down on the bay, those old million sparkles on the water. Like that mountain lake that was so clear, Jenny. It looked like there were two skies, one on top of the other. In the desert, when the sun comes up, you tell where heaven stopped, the earth began. I wish I could have been there with you. She saw the truth, but once she did, it was too late. I love you. You died on a Saturday morning. I had you placed here under our tree. And I had that house so your father bulldozed to the ground. Mama. He always did what was right for people. Dying was a part of life. I sure wish it was. Don't be all. Little Forrest, you're doing just fine. About to start school again soon. I make his breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every day. He was going to have a family with her. Combs his hair, brushes his teeth every day, teaching him how to play ping pong. Okay. He's really uh, good. Forrest, you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. He's a good father. We fish a lot. And every night we read a book. He's so smart, Jenny. You'd be so proud of him. He wrote you a, a letter. And he says, I can't read it. 
That's supposed to, so I just leave it here for you. Oh. I don't know if Mama was right or if it's Lieutenant Dan. I don't know if we each have a destiny. We're all just floating around accidental like on a breeze. I miss you, Jimmy. If there's anything you need, I won't be far away. The dream of having a family with her was shattered, but he's still going to take, he made a promise to her that he still will look after her. I want to tell you I love you. I love you too, Daddy. Aw, look at that. I'll be right here when you get back. <laughs> you understand, this is the bus to the school now, don't you? Of course, and you were Dorothy Harris, nine, four, scump. Even after all these years, she's still the bus driver. There's the feather from the opening scene. And that's a wrap on Forrest Gump. And I really needed some time to really think about the movie. I got to admit, it's very funny. It's well acted. It's dramatic. So basically the story is basically it's a gentleman. But throughout the 25, 30 year history that they show, depict him in, he like changes everyone's life and he influences people for the better. I mean, with his kindness, his big heart, you know, he was able to get Lieutenant Dan to end his tradition, which he was mad. But Lieutenant Dan, one of the things that sticks out with me is that the turning point was when he was with those two girls and he called and she called Forrest Gump stupid. He understood why labels were not okay. And of course he was mad at Forrest, but started to work with him. He started to forgive him and he was rewarded with a family. Another one that I found very special was obviously the Bubba relationship. The relationship he had with Bubba over in Vietnam. They were good friends throughout entire Vietnam, and that was also very symbolic of what was going a war, you know. And you serve with someone, and then they die right in front of you. He ha had dreams to become a shrimp boat captain, and of course you could tell he was because he had that Tabasco sauce on his helmet, and it was all shattered because of the horrible circumstances that happened in war, especially Vietnam. Forrest Gump made a promise to him to create his dream of having his own shrimp boat company and a restaurant. And he did just that. Forrest is such a loyal character to everyone. One of the things I noticed is that Jenny was always running away from her problems. Forrest faced it and he, he, and he did just that. But you can tell that she had a difficult time and that was with these men who took advantage of her. And that was due to her horrible and abusive relationship with her own father. She got into drugs. She got into counterculture. She got taken advantage of. She got abused. And Forrest was always worried about her no matter where she goes. And one of the scenes that she talks about at the very end before she dies, she says, I wish I could have been there with you. Another thing I want to talk about is his mother. His mother played a very important part. These characters were all important to the structure of Forrest Gump and the story. His mother played an important part because not only did she, you know, she not only, you know, she guided him. She gave him advice. She made him realize that, hey, look. You may be different, but no one is better than the other. And that that word of wisdom really helped him throughout history. You know, he was kind to people. He didn't look down on anybody. You know, he was a good character. He was a good person throughout the entire journey, no matter what. This is a great movie, and I can see why you guys like it so much. And the history and the music was just absolutely amazing. And we'll see you on the next video. And until then, the spotlights are off. Bye, everyone.